Hey guys, welcome back to Don't Nix the Book. So this week we're going to be talking about one of my all-time favourites by an author you know very well. The same author as The Princess Diaries. You know, the movie with Anne Hathaway and Judy and Julie Andrews. And I'm just, oh, it's such a good film. Based on a book, did you know? Because I didn't. But it's one of her lesser known works. It's called The Abandoned Trilogy by Meg Cabot. Now, I'll be honest, I found her books when I was 13, scrolling through the young adult section of my school library, and I loved them. So I finished rereading them for like the sixth time um, earlier this year, and just, oh, I'm maybe much older now, going on, you know, almost a decade older. Yeesh. But I still love them. There is... There's that little bit of nostalgia, but it's also really well written. So, the main preface of the trilogy is... The main character, Pierce, is a NDE, near-death experience survivor. Meaning, she was clinically dead, and then she was revived. And... Oh, it's so cute! Um, except for the whole stalking the eight-year-old sort of thing but look any immortal and you know mortal romance you're gonna have some weird part in there it's kind of unavoidable i've yet to see a series with like immortal being and mortal actually not be creepy in any sense you've just got some that are better than others so basically this death deity, his name's Hayden, was a big part of Pierce's family and had been like keeping an eye out on, you know, her mother's family for like three generations. Basically, her mother was brought up to be his consort by her creepy, crafty grandmother. Like, judgmental, anti-queer, racist, lovely, lovely person. And just the amount of thought that went into these books. And considering they were written years ago, <laughs> um, I don't have an exact date, but I'm thinking around 2010. The fact that there is good queer representation! Ah! One of my favourite characters, the Cemetery Sexton, which is actually a thing. Um, basically he runs the grounds and keeps everything tidy and organises the paperwork and burial plots and yada yada yada. He has a husband. And this was before gay marriage was legal, guys! He has, he has a husband, and they're, like, there's no clear top or bottom, they're just really cute. And, like, their entire relationship, even though it's only really fleshed out in the last book, is so cute. <laughs> I've read and reread these books so many times and I don't think they are popular enough. I really don't. So head to your local library, head to, you know, you can find them free online, I'm totally not saying this. If you don't have the money to read, reading anything, even if it's illegally, is better than not reading at all. Me, I need to increase the size of my text ridiculously, and I sit there with a dictionary. I love ebooks because I can sit there and go, I don't know what this word is. And I can look it up. I found some really cool stuff doing that. But basically, I adore these books. And I can't say much plot wise because everything is intertwined, and these small little things that you don't notice initially 
all are really important. Um, some of it's a little bit cliche, but you know, everything that happens, like for example, when Pierce first meets Hayden, he offers her coffee and she says, no thank you, I only drink tea. And that's a reoccurring thing. Could be because she threw the tea in his face. But whenever they are out in public consuming beverages, he gets a tea. And genuinely, it's just really sweet. Um, and while there are very few moments of which Pierce does the Disney princess, oh, woe is me, my boyfriend jumped off a cliff. She actually has personality and once she's over that initial shock, she kicks ass. She is the reason that Hayden treats other people, not like she always, he always treats her with respect, but he treats other people outside of this with respect. And they both really help each other grow. And it's nice to see that in a book where one character isn't getting walked over. Pierce has a backbone. She stands up for herself. No problems. And because of that, and because Hayden truly cares about her, he analyzes his own behavior and goes, no, she wouldn't want me to do this. I'm not going to bash this person's face in. She wouldn't want me to do this. I'm not going to commit mass murder. Which is the thing in books, because it's fiction. If your boyfriend is trying to commit mass murder, he should not be your boyfriend. But if he's a, you know, 300 to anywhere to a thousand year old deity, you've got some, you've got a little bit of leeway. If you're sleeping with, like, the person who organizes the souls into good place and bad place, you've got a little bit more leeway. <laughs> anyway. You should read this book. It's one of my favourites. It does not get hardly the attention it deserves. Anyway, see you guys next week. Bye!